Under the watchful eyes of the keeper of this place, Donald Trump and Marla Maples, we are set to go to our main event, the USBA Bantamweight Championship, Dio Andujar and Junior Jones. Junior Jones really does believe this time that should he get by Andujar, he will in fact get a title shot. Let's take a look at what he brings to the dance. The only top 10 lists that don't include the name Junior Jones are on the David Letterman Show. Performances like this one against Alejandro Sanabria have made him a top Bantamweight contender. His offensive arsenal is complete, with big power in the right hand. And that has helped him produce 13 KOs in 20 wins. He's just shy of his 21st birthday, but he is already a force in boxing. And that is exactly what Sanabria found out, and he found out why. Tremendous power from Junior Jones. Ramon Solis had given Scotty Olsen problems, but when he faced Jones, it was no contest. Jones used hooks and right hands to take him out. Did I say Solis gave Olsen some trouble? Well, his foe tonight did exactly the same. Dio Anjahar looked for all the world like he would tame the toy bulldog. He had him in huge trouble at several points in this bout, but he could not get a win. Fighting on short notice, Dio just couldn't sustain and he lost the decision. But since then, he has destroyed top contender Eddie Cook. And he says he's ready tonight. This is his big moment. And he will have a tough guy to deal with in Junior Jones, as you can see, ranked number four, IBF number three, WBA. And he really does believe that after this win, he's got a real chance. Dio Andujar, on the other hand, anything but a gimme. He is ranked number six by the IBF. I, I just look for this fight to be very competitive, Al. I think it will be, and here's the way in which uh, each man might win it. If you're Jones, leave it, you won't love it. If he leaves that right hand out, he won't love it because Andujar will counter him. Hook, it's not the movie, no, we're not talking about that. Gotta use the left hook. For Andujar, counter strike. He needs to counter punch and do it effectively. When I say believe, Barry, he just has to go in there and know that he can win this fight. And I really believe he does. He's a very quiet guy, but sometimes in that quietness, you really find a confidence. And I think that's what Dio Andar has. As you look at the USBA rules, no three knockdowns, the stand, no standing eight count. That's in the state of New Jersey. The position to stop the fight, the 10 point must is and you know all the rest there of those. Let's get to him now and meet these fighters with Michael Buffer. Michael? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Arum and top ranked boxing in association with. The undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. Boxing Commissioner, Larry Hazard, Senior Chairman, Mr. Jerry Gormley, Board Members, Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison. Deputy Commissioners are Yogi Hiltner and Lawrence Wallace. Physicians at ringside, Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Frank B. Doggett. Attending physicians, Dr. Stanley Edden and Dr. Eric Wormser. The timekeeper is Arthur Spell. The scoring will be done on a 10-point must system, and the three judges are Gene Williams, Al DeVito, and Eugene Grant. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Donald J. Trump's Taj Mahal Casino Resort here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant USBA Bantamweight Championship. The referee for this contest is Robert Palmer. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with silver trim, and weighing an even 117 pounds, he's originally from the Philippines, but now lives and fights out of Stockton, California. His professional record, a veteran of 49 bouts, 39 victories with 16 KOs, eight defeats and two draws. He's ranked number six in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Dio Andujar. And his opponent across the ring in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with silver letters, weighing 117 and one half pounds. He's from the Big Apple, New York City. Undefeated as a professional, he's 20 and 0 with 13 KOs. Ranked number three in the world, ladies and gentlemen, Poison Junior Jones. Gentlemen, you've had your pre-fight instructions. You have any further questions? Want a good clean fight? You got your trunks a little high. You want to leave them here? His trunks. Okay? Touch him up. Come on out the bell. So there is a look at Dio Andujar. And Andujar is a guy who has had plenty of time, no excuses in this fight whatsoever. Al mentioned he took the Scotty Olsen fight on short notice, had to lose a lot of weight. Got a tough guy tonight in Junior Jones, but a good fight. One other little cosmetic note, it seems that Michael Buffer's rouge is a little more pink tonight, I think. 
expect me to respond? <laughs> no, of course not. That just was an observation. <laughs> I, 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 this getting is, me in trouble at I, every I, turn. I don't know. It's an observation. I watch television like you do. 65% knockouts for Jones. 33% never let us go on vacation. No. Uh, four weeks off is dangerous. I think the early rounds of this match could be interesting because Jones wants to do just that. Establish that he can attack and not be hit by Andrew Har when he does it in the counter. Look out for the left hook of Andrew Har. It's the punch that if, if any will do damage to Jones, that could be the one. Jones the left hook to get things started. Here. Jones wants to use the jab, but not leave it out there so that uh, Dio can counter him, because he also has a good counter right. And so far as you can see, as we would expect in this bout, where both men have a lot of respect for each other, and there is a, a lot of tactics in this bout that'll be important, starting out a little slow. We talked about Jones on numerous occasions, but he has a very Thomas Hearns type body. Yeah, and it could go up a weight or two, a couple of weight divisions along the way. Generates a lot of power too, and you wouldn't really think with the build that he has that he would be able to, but he definitely does. He punches well with a lot of leverage. One thing that Junior is doing very well, throwing a lot of feints at Dio, and making Dio go for them, that'll, that'll make it, him a little gun-shy about countering so quickly. He'll be doing something when the punches are coming. One of the things about watching boxing here on ESPN is you really do get a chance to see a fighter grow, and I think Junior Jones really indicative of that. We've seen him now probably seven or eight times, and you can just see him take a step every time he gets out there. He really has improved. One of the matches, the 10th against Juan Carrazo, the first time he looked a little tired at the end. Right. Next time out against Jose Luis Vegaville. Gil, he went 10, and this time he wasn't tired. And so, he, as you said, a constant improvement by him. Become a very good finisher. Get Doesn't right. get careless when he gets a man in trouble, which is something he did early on. And it's interesting when you think he is going to be 21 in a couple days. He is very young to have those kind of polished skills. Credit to him and his trainer, Joey Ferriello. And tonight, of course, fighting a guy who has very much the edge and experience, Dio Andohar has been around. Come to the end of the first round, and the action gets hot as we come to the final bell. We start the second round. And the advice from Joey Ferriello in the corner of Junior Jones. Use the jab, go 12 rounds if you have to, use the feint, basically do what you're doing. Yeah, and uh, they like what he's doing. Andrew Harland, they get a decent percentage, but as is often, there's the hook by Andrew Harland. That one, that, the first one got there. Uh, as usual, Dio will not throw a lot of punches, and that's a problem for him. Sometimes he needs knockouts to win because he doesn't throw that many punches. 16 knockouts in his 39 wins. We talked about his experience, 39, eight, and two. All his fights in the Philippines, up to the last three. He's, he's picked some pretty good uh, boxers to fight in that in that group there. And then Scotty Olsen and Eddie Cook. And his hero, pretty good boxer too. Uh, Flash Elordi, yeah, who was one of the great boxers to come out of the Philippines or anywhere for that matter, great champion. There's the hooks by Jones. Junior Jones has a wonderful double left hook to the body of the head. That's what just showed you, he came with the right hand there. Now, while he's doing this, Andrew Har is just, you can see he's just calculating, can I land a counter? So far, he hasn't. And if the punches get too wide for Jones, that's when Andrew Har may feel that he can get something. But he's having trouble doing it so far. And let's give Jones credit for that. And that's another thing Jones has worked on. Early in his career, as we recall, he was a little open when he attacked, but not anymore. Yeah, I think... Junior Jones really the perfect student for Joey Ferriello. They really seem to be a very good team. He's really dedicated. He wants to be champion and he's willing to work together. I break. Step clean. I think probably so far Andrew O'Hara has maybe been a little surprised at Jones' quickness, not only with his hands, but in terms of defense. Dio has not been able to land those counterpunches. He missed badly with the left hook on many occasions. 
thing that Jones does that's really impressive is he's not only quick to get his punches off, he's quick to get them back. And that, again, is something he's done better in recent bouts. <laughs> A lot of Andujar's punches have been the gloves of Junior Jones. It's interesting, you know, they say styles make fights. I know, but, right. The man that we, Daniel Hoyer, has done well against recently, Scotty Olsen and Eddie Cook, are both short men who come to him. This is a tall man who's coming to him but doing it for a boxing stance. You can see it's giving Andrew Hart a lot of problems. Yeah, you can almost see, and you said this earlier, Andrew Hart just trying to figure things out, trying to decide what he needs to do. Well, what he did there was get there with a pretty good right hand. We'll be back. <laughs> Third round, and so far, Junior Jones doing a pretty good job. Andrew Hart did get there with the right hand at the end of that last round. And a little extracurricular activity at the end by both men. You know, we always talk about what makes a good corner and how good corners function. Well, it'll give you a pretty good idea of what is a good corner and how a good corner functions right now. Listen in between the last two rounds to Joe Ferriello in the corner of Junior Jones. Junior, it's important that you back him up at the jam because it's busting him up and it's keeping him going back. And I'm doing it? Yeah, you're doing it great. But I say, I don't want you to stop it. You understand what I mean? Yes. Now, the other thing is, try not to load up with one punch. Back break. Step back. Step back. Me. One voice and no more than two pieces of advice. And uh, repeat it again. He was repeating it later. You, you want to give short advice, say it early, repeat it later just before the round ends. And the jab is doing wonders for Junior. And that's the difference. See, against Scotty Olsen and Eddie Cook, shorter boxers, Andrew Hart, even though Scotty Olsen has a pretty decent jab, which he wasn't using that, that night as much against Andrew Hart, without that jab, Dio can be an effective boxer. Now, Dio went to left-handed stance toward the end of the last round and landed one good punch. I think if I was him, I might go back to that. I cannot emphasize too much that Eddie Cook in his last fight not only knocked out Eddie Cook, did I say Eddie Cook? Dio Andohar in his last fight not only knocked out Eddie Cook, but knocked him down four times. Yeah, he dominated completely. Again, he's, fa and he's facing a different, completely different kind of animal in here tonight. Now, there's the hook, but that's what Andrew Hart wants badly. That one may have gotten Jones' attention. Yes, it did. And Andrew Hart knows it, but he's looking to do it again. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, the hook is very close now for Andrew Hart. This round, it's different. He's close to landing a big hook again. Well, we said that he looked as though he was just trying to figure out where he needed to be. Yeah, and I don't know if it'll have an impact on Jones, but he's close to landing. Meanwhile, Jones, of course, is going about his business of scoring points. You know, when you look at Jones doing that, you think that he's easy to hit, and he's not. He is not that easy to hit. A little short with the right hand by Anduhar. Anduhar, a very patient fighter. But as you said, he doesn't throw a lot of punches, and that, in the long run, can hurt him. Coming to the end of the third round, Anduhar getting closer, but Jones still doing most of the work. We'll be back to Trump right after this. Here's what Dio Andrejar wants to do, kind of. He got the hook in, but it was a slapping punch. Try, he wants to land that a little more flush. We start the fourth round, and in Andrejar's corner, and I do not speak Tagalog, which language Philippine, uh, the Philippine people. However, I did understand David Thompson say to him, throw combinations, which is the same in any language. Know, yes, right. and counterpunch. He said every time he misses, you've got to throw a counterpunch. Here are the total punches in the fight. Jones doing twice as much and probably scoring twice as much. Landing the same percentage, but as you said, if you throw twice as many punches, you're in better uh, shape. Right, break. Step back. Step back. Man, you got a shutout for Jones. It's hard to look at it any other way. No, Dio Andrew has not thrown that many punches, and uh, Jones has been very busy. Now, they had a lot of time to prepare Andrew Hart. Now, there he goes to the lefty stance. I think it's worth a try for him to see how he does. With I think he should stay with it for a good portion, if not the whole round, to see how it does. 
It worked toward the end of round uh, two for him, I believe it was. <laughs> See? Why not? See, it's confused Jones momentarily. Right, trying to keep the pressure on him, but he lunged in that time. I break. Staying with the left hand stance here. And I, ooh, there was a wave south of the quarter by uh, Junior Jones. I think that that if there is any small chink in Jones' armor, I don't think he does as well against lefties as he ought to. And here's Andrew Hart proving it in my mind. He got hit with a left hand big Jones. And, and you know, Andrew Hart gives up a little power to turn to the left handed stance, but he gains something in terms of his punches of getting there a little bit now. And he's staying with it. It has worked to some degree in this round. Well, two things are happening. He's not getting hit as much, and he is landing more often. So now he's back to right. He may have used it so that now when he moves back to right, he'll, he'll be better off, which is another possibility. Make Jones adjust to him. But I lied because he's lefty now. Just kidding. He's gone back and forth. No, he did get back to right. Interesting tactic employed by Dio Andohar as Jones spits the mouthpiece at the end of round four. We'll be back to the Taj Mahal with more right after this. We start the fifth round. Junior Jones in the blue trunks, Dio Andohar in the black. A little bit of a better round for Dio Andohar, the fourth. A smidge better, and you can see he made it made it almost even. I ended up giving Andrew Hard the edge because of some of the power punches he landed. So yes, and it was all due to the fact that he switched to southpaw, and so he comes out righty this round. Of course, he may switch back. Seems to want to go to the left hand stance when he's in the center of the ring, although he's not doing it now. And Joey Ferriello in the corner of Junior Jones said, "Throw combinations. You're trying to load up too much with one punch." He, he gives Jones the opportunity to land the jab better as a, as a, as a right hand fighter. That's important. Jones did a lot of that. Junior has hit him a lot in those getting out of those clinches. Now, now he's back to left, and he might have stayed right at the beginning to give him that look now to see if he could confuse him further. Andohar seems to push a little more with the left hand than he does with the right. And his right hook is not uh, as effective as his left hook when he's in the, uh, you know, when he goes to south point, he's on the right hook. But it's, it can get there a little better. And in either stance, he doesn't throw that many punches, does he? Yeah, that's not going to get it done. Jones not the easiest guy in the world to get out of it. Nobody's been able to do it yet. You know, this is, I mentioned it before, and it's true, the key thing is, when you're facing short fighters coming to you, if you're a good counterpuncher, you can hurt him. But, the, but Jones is tall, and he's got the jab, and Andrew are having a hard time reaching him. Good right hand. That hurt Andrew, and Andrew back with the right hand of his own. And it was from the lefty stance, and it stunned Jones. That, and that one did also. From the lefty stance, the right hook, right uppercut can get to Jones. There it is again. Yeah, Jones' legs went for a minute there. Both men were rocked in that first exchange. If Dio Andrejar doesn't fight the rest of this match as a south point, he's crazy. And there is a cut alongside yep. the left eye of Junior Jones. It came from that right hook. Or it might have come from a clash of heads, but it certainly landed some good right hooks. And that could change the whole picture of the fight here. Right now, good left hand by Andrew. The only way Dio Andrew is going to win this fight is with the knockout. You forget about a decision. He's given away too many rounds. He doesn't throw a lot of punches. So his best hope is to hurt Jones, and he's hurt him a couple times. Caught him twice there, a left hand and a right behind it. Good round for Dio Andrew. We're going into the corner of Junior Jones. There may be a little concern here. Okay, I got to go. Okay, just relax, Junior. 
It's fine. It's no problem. No problem. Listen to me. I want you to listen to me, okay? Mm -hmm. All your heads heads. Get pressure on that. Yeah, all right. Listen to me. You start to back up a little bit. Yeah. And when he comes into you, you're looking to grab. Uh-uh, yeah, baby. Yeah, you got to throw punches. I know. That was a punch. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you got it? Good punch. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah, I got you. Okay. If you start that grabbing stuff, this guy will see that, and he'll come on like gang- gangbusters. Okay. So don't panic. Just relax. And keep on backing Stay him up with the jab. Okay. All right? All right. Take a deep breath. Okay. Well, a reminder that tomorrow night there is more boxing coming your way. A special, the WBC Junior Middleweight title. We told you about this earlier. Terry Norris versus Jorge Castro. not be deep, but it's long. It covers almost the entire length of his eyes. Yeah, if, they, if Andrew Hart can hit that, he could create a problem with that. In the fifth round, Andrew Hart still not doing enough. Actually, I thought he would have done better than that. Table oh, because he landed 50% of his punches, but just didn't throw many. Now maybe this is going to be a pattern. He'll start the round out righty and then switch to lefty. Now that's okay if he does that. But uh, to stay as a righty, in my mind, is absurd. This is the sixth round for the USBA Bantamweight Championship. I'm Al, Tom, Al, Ber- Al Bernstein. You're Al Bernstein. I'm, uh, we have been working together too long. I, <laughs> I'm Hart Chapman and Marks. We did a mind and, melt. And you're Hugo Boss. <laughs> written in my pocket I'd never know <laughs> no tonight I'm Pierre Cardin I think I'm not sure who I am I do know that Junior Jones just hit the blue trunks and Dio Andhar is in the black and I do know that Junior Jones had a cut over his right eye left eye in the last round I can't even get that right because <laughs> he didn't know that either that's right that's why I had your name on you're on the right side I'm on the yeah, left side it. You know, Andrew Har, I hate to harp on this, but he's still staying as a righty, and I can't imagine that because he's had decent success as a left-hander, and even if he would just switch back and forth to confuse Jones, that was, now see, he heard me now. Darn it. He's listening. That's good. Because there he is. Now, it's not just enough to switch, though. He's going to have to get that right hook in, which he did earlier. Cut starts to bleed again. It's not a serious cut right now. It's just the length of the cut that's going to be a problem. And Andrew Har hasn't hit it in this round. Jones has been content to stay outside and jab, jab, jab. But see, he can't land the jab as good as, a, as a, when Andrew Har's a lefty. So it gives him, Andrew Har a better opportunity. But again, Deal throwing so few punches. That's what Andrew needs to do, work anything. And there's that right uppercut. See, if Jones lays on the inside with him, he gives Andrew a chance to do that. He needs really to be on the outside against Andrew. Oh, did you see the head by yes. Jones? That was late. See, that's dangerous territory for Jones, even though he's landing. He could get countered at any time. Well, and it, it backfired on Jones, didn't it? Because it opened the cut over that eye. His cut got open. That may have been because of all that head banging. Watch your heads, guys. Jones does not want to turn this into a brawl. No. And I'm sure Joe Ferriello will tell him that between rounds. But the cut's still not a deep cut, and that is significant. Still a long way to go. We come to the end of the sixth round, and we'll be back to the Taj Mahal right, right. after this. Step back, step back. Right. The clash of heads. Now, that looks pretty blatant and, and intentional to me. Sorry, Junior, but... And then in the corner, there's some of that cut over the left eye. And Barry, was, you were making the point, maybe the referee ruled it to be a clash of heads, which means if it was stopped because of that, they'd go to the cards. We probably will have to try and see if we can uh, find that out. We're not in a position physically to do that, but we will I find heard, out. I thought I heard Robert Palmer say that at the end of the last round, but I don't know. If that's true, of course, then the cut wouldn't uh, win the fight for Andrew. Well, there you see, through six, the jab, and the, certainly Jones... That's a staple of his attack, even though he's not landing a good percentage. Andrew Hart is not even thinking jab. No, it's not his, not his thing. This counter hook wasn't a great one, but it got there. Get out, now, please. why do I, I keep saying Andrew Hart should be lefty? Here he is turning lefty. Because when he, watch the difference. When he turns lefty, the jab of Jones becomes ineffective and it becomes a brawl. See, look, they're already there on the inside. Were they on the inside for the first 30 seconds of this bout, or this round? No. They, I assure you, if he stays lefty, they'll be on the inside much more. Look, the, Jones can't land the jab against him. 
And this is one of the pl few places where I disagree with Joey Ferriello and Junior Jones' strategy, which they profess. They say you can jab as good against the lefty as you can a righty if you're a right-hander. I don't believe that. And you can see by the footwork, I believe that a righty should step outside the right foot of a southpaw and throw a left hook to the body and head. And Jones has a good left hook to the body and head. But it's falling under the left eye now of Dio and Duhar. Not a big problem. Nor is the cut at the moment over the left eye of Junior Jones. And, and Andrew Har has done nothing to, to, to affect that cut. Stop! Well, Dio Andrew Har is simply looking for one punch here. Not throwing many, so it's hard to imagine it's going to happen. There's his hook, which, boy, has been dormant and he's gone back to a righty yeah he can't get that hook in as well as he like he took a right hand from jones they exchanged punches but jones got the better of him. see he andrew Hart really wants that he's very tough to hurt or knock knock down andrew Hart. he wants that exchange jumps on Andrew Hart, and Andrew Hart is there. Big rally at the end of the seventh round by Junior Jones, who already had the round one. Center, Charles Barkley throws the book. You look at the overhand right, the counter by Junior Jones over the jab of Andrew Hart. That may be one of the reasons why he's not throwing so many jabs. This is the eighth round. Once again in the corner, Joey Ferriello exhorting him to throw more combinations. Let's see his drop on the corner we quartered just a moment ago. Right in with the jab. He's just trying to con you. You did, but you're starting to throw one punch at a time too much. You understand me? They can't have thrown combinations. Stop with the one punch stuff. You understand what I mean? And he did throw combinations, actually, especially at the end of the round. In fact, I thought he threw combinations pretty much through that whole round. The last minute, especially. But at, he, Joey Ferrer is right. When he switches to lefty, Jones kind of stops. In the seventh round, Jones' efficiency still up there, although his punches dropped off a little bit. 69 punches. Nice shot there. Hand, that hurt him. And a right hand crashes in on Andrew Hart. Now let's see if Jones can finish. He's got him in big trouble. I haven't seen Andrew Hart hurt yet since I've watched him. This is the first time in all the time he's taking big punches. The first time I've seen him hurt. And he's in a survival mode now. Swelling on the both eyes of Andrew Hart now. It's not easy to get Andrew Hart in the kind of trouble Jones had him in. You can see by the fact that Andrew Hart was able to sustain and stay in there. That flurry of excitement has about to settle back into, unfortunately, where it's been most of the time. But John just kind of doing his job, and Andrew Hart not doing much. That really did apparently take the starch out of Andrew Hart, though. Yeah, it did change the tenor of this bout. Get out. Step back. Mentioned that, uh, of course, Jones would love to get a shot at one of the Bantamweight uh, champions. Another big right hand by Jones, right on the button. It doesn't look like uh, Junior's ranking will be in danger the way he's boxing here tonight. No, boxing very well, doing what he needs to do. Working the jab pretty well now, too. Very well. And staying on the outside, which is great. That's what he should do. Great for him. Coming to the end of the eighth round, a very good round for Junior Jones. He left no doubt in this one. Reminder that basketball action coming your way here on ESPN. Saturday, a double dip. It'll be on ESPN. 
Round number nine, Junior Jones, Blue Trunks, D.U. Andohar, Black Trunks. This for the USBA Bantamweight Championship. Well, you look at those total punches, and in the last round, Andohar only threw 22 punches. So just not many being thrown or landed by uh, D.O. He's actually landing in a better percentage than Jones, but and throwing less than half. The more this fight goes on, the less likely it would seem that Andohar can get Jones out of there. Jones really took charge of the fight in the last round. Completely, and, and did so from the outside, which is where he should be. And you are helped him out by staying righty the whole round. And now I, I just think it's target practice for Jones, unless Andrew Hart lands, nice jab by deal, unless he lands some real big left hook, perhaps. I was thinking you started to touch upon this in the last round, but when they talk championship opportunities, originally they weren't talking about Canizales. They basically felt we're not quite ready for him, but now they are, and Zio Andohar's in big trouble, and down he goes. able to get his hands up now he does i don't know i, I think this will be over shortly yeah it's a question of time that's good it work. good work by the referee and you know that was good work as we look at junior jones a huge win for him he gave him the chance to get get back in the fight but then realized he wasn't done very good effort for junior jones he did what he needed to do all right and he made what potentially could have been a, a difficult fight for him into a very easy fight, relatively speaking. You can see, you, Junior Jones knows. You can look at the reaction there. He knows he beat a better fighter maybe than he's faced before. He's progressively gone up in, in competition and knows that he performed well. And he didn't let the cut get in his way either. It was something that could have played on his mind, but Joey Ferriello in the corner did not let it. Right from the get-go, they said, don't worry about it, not a problem. And it appeared it could have been the kind of cut that could have given him a problem. It never got any worse than it was when it first happened. Yeah, and uh, they did a good job on it, as you mentioned, and uh, he did not allow it to be a distraction. We'll take a look at the first knockdown in this round. Jones using the, um, the jab as a range finder. Interestingly, that hit the glove, but he was already hurt, I think, and then took his big right hand, and Jones hitting him almost when he's down, but not quite. Other angle of that knockdown. Now the first, there's the good straight right hand that hurt him. And then there's the right that bounced off the gloves and Andrew Hart ended up going down. Was able to get up. Robert Palmer gave him a chance in the fight, but as soon as he realized that there was probably not too much of a chance of Andrew Hart protecting himself, he jumped in. Superb referee. Yeah, it really was. Did an excellent job to jump in and stop it. Let's make, the, make it official now with Michael Buck. Michael. Ladies and gentlemen in the ring at this time to present this brand new USBA Bantamweight Championship belt is USBA Supervisor Marion Mahalad along with Boxing Commissioner from New Jersey, Mr. Larry Hazard. The official time, one minute, 23 seconds of the ninth round. Referee Robert Palmer stops the belt. The winner and new USBA Bantamweight Champion Poison, Junior Jones. So Junior Jones really, I'm sure, using this as a springboard to what he hopes and what he really believes will be a championship shot. I don't think you'll find any arguers to that. We'll be back to talk with him right after this. Center of the ring with the Barry, winner. Thank you. Thanks for that travel itinerary, Barry. I'm going to mark my date book. Junior Jones, with another excellent performance, is getting redundant to say that, but true. We keep saying how you get better every fight, and you do. And this was a performance. You really look pleased with this at the end. Oh, definitely. Well, that's from the, you know, good train I got, Joe Fabriello, who mm -hmm. I have a lot of confidence in, and things he tell me to do, I feel 100% of the times, it's definitely going to work. You, pr the only thing that happened tonight at all that threw you was when he turned lefty, he had a few moments of uh, confusion, but not many. No, well, I, 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 I built that up myself with the last lefty, and I let it kind of bother me a little, mm -hmm. but all I did is went back to the corner, listened to what Joe had to say, and corrected it from there. Well, you did indeed, and one of the things you did, as you always do, is land a terrific right hand. Your right hand has such power in it. Not easy to hurt this guy, but you did. No, well, he, he was very tough in game, but the right hand came from the jab. The jab, I feel, is my offense, my defense. Without the jab, I can't get started. All right, let's take a look, uh, Junior, at eighth round action, where you were really getting to Andrew Har, and uh, you're throwing good combinations. There's the right. Yeah, well, that, that came through the counter punch, step back at the throws, and counter with the right hand, because I seen most of the shots I was hurting when it was hurting him. 
He tried to counter you with the left, and you came over with a very quick right hand. The counter left hand didn't seem to bother you much. No, well, I watched the tape on him, and that's the only thing he throws was mostly left hands. But like Joe said, you know, I put the punch together, throw him the combinations, and we get him out of there. Okay. Let's take a look at the uh, ninth round knockdown here. And uh, again, the right hand. Yeah, well, the right hand comes for the jab, and when I step in with my punches, I'm able to get a lot of leverage on it. Well, you do get leverage, that's for sure. And uh, let's bring in Joey Ferriello and see if we can get a report card. I can't believe it would be anything but an A here, huh? I thought he should have picked up the pace a little bit. Oh, <laughs> come on, give him an A. Be a nice guy. <laughs> He's got an A. It was an okay. outstanding performance. I was really surprised, and I told you before the fight, that he would stop Andoha. Andoha's a, a very experienced fighter. Yeah. Uh, he's been in with Espinosa, all the good punches, and nobody stopped him. It, it, it shocked me that Junior was able to stop him. Well, and no, n nothing detrimental to Junior. As you said, he just takes a terrific punch. I want to find out from Gary Gittleson, your manager over here, if they, we can get a report, a, a thought on what you may do in the future. Is, are you any closer to getting a title match? Absolutely. 92 is going to bring a title match for Junior. We're looking at any one of the three champions, mm -hmm. probably Orlando Canizales or possibly... Uh, or possibly Israel Contreras. The Japanese guy we don't know much about, and I understand he has eye problems, and he's over in Japan. So but one of the two champions sometime in 92, Junior's ready for anyone. All right, Junior, you're going to be 21 pretty soon. Happy birthday, and uh, you celebrated in grand style tonight. Yeah, well, this is the early Christmas part. I got my Christmas present than the rest of you, and, you know, before I go, I'd like to take thanks to people in South Carolina, at Moe's Pool Room, North Carolina, and all the fans and friends that came out to see me. Thank you all right, very much. Congratulations, Junior. Junior Jones, gracious in victory. Terrific match for him. He performed about as well as you would expect a young man to perform. We'll be back to close things out. Stay with us. Hamrick have enjoyed great success.